Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with a newly minted record <laughs> CR holder, Michelino Microlino Sinceri. <laughs> How's it going, Mike? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm a little tired. I can't see my right eye still. It's a little fuzzy. <laughs> but other than that, I feel pretty good. I'm pretty stoked on this one. I, so, yeah. So you just ran, what, 502? Uh, I think it was 501.15. So about a minute, 16 seconds off my goal, but that's okay. I mean, but three minutes fine. ahead, the record of the course record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky. We were wheeling you down the last uh, the last half mile or so because we were unsure whether it was a quarter mile or a half mile. And we're like, how quick can Mikey run a half mile time? Oh, man. That last mile this course. So I I knew where the two mile mark was to the finish. I was at four hours, 44 minutes, and I was like, oh, I just have to run eight-minute miles the last two miles. Like, that's not a big deal. But that last mile, you climb 400 feet, and I was just shredded, man. I was – I really – I was trying so hard. Uh, hamstrings are cramping. The quads are cramping. Yeah, no. I we tried, had, dude, but couldn't do it today. <laughs> we had a nice uh, drone footage of you picking your way up to the, the trees. And there's that one section where you cross over the washout – yeah. And it was like, it's so slow to get to the fire road. But once you get out to the fire road, we saw a smile on your face. And we knew you were going to take at least the course record. So let's go back to the start. When I talked to you this week, you said you had a, your goal was to go out hard and go out fast and then run faster. <laughs> um, did your, your, talk to us about your game plan and about how the race played out. Yeah, totally. Uh, my game plan. So looking at the start list, there's some really, really freaking talented Alaskans coming down here. And they're known for being absolutely fantastic climbers and fantastic on the technical terrain. So I kind of thought, okay, the one thing they don't have there is the altitude. So I talked to Ryan Becker. So we're kind of in on this together. Uh, so luckily that was nice to have a have a, uh, so you you know, both a partner to in crime. To, to go out hard at the start, right? Yeah, I, I told him yesterday, I was like, Ryan, I was like, my plan, I want to go out hard, uh, take it out really hard. That way we can kind of destroy their lungs early. Because we're used to it. Ryan lives up at altitude. I've been up at 9,200 feet all year. So the goal was, okay, we got we to gotta make sure like, we can get these guys early. That way, their strengths, they're tired by the time we get there. So there was, there was some planning involved As there. a C-level person who raced <laughs> against you last year, I am so glad I didn't jump into the 50K this year because uh, I would have been amongst the group of people crushed by an early fast pace. It, I mean, I, I, I was paying for it. That start to finish, that hurt. Yeah. But... I mean, it worked out, yeah. so it's all good. So you, you, both yourself and Ryan ran into uh, the first stage aid station, Moonlight 1, together. I think by Moonlight 2, you may have gapped him slightly. Did you see him after that? Were you cognizant of where he was behind you throughout the rest of the race? Yeah, no, me and Ryan were working together for most of, all the way up until about mile 12 or so. Okay. Um, so we were actually right after that second aid station. So aid 1, aid 2... Uh, I was taking in calories and he actually got me and I was, you know, running with him for a little bit. We kind of leapfrogged for, you know, the first 12 miles, like I said. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, then, you know, I, Ryan's a friend, but this is racing and sometimes you do have to be a little cutthroat. So yeah. <laughs> he was, you know, he started taking in a gel. He was, uh, you know, trying to get nutrition in and I kind of took advantage of it and put in a little surge and Where then from that happen? point forward led from the. Where exactly was that surge? That was around, like, right after that mile 12 or so. It was on the, the like switchbacks the that cut up to the bowl. So you, you get take the switchbacks up headwater before the big climb, and then you kind of dip down and around through that talus field, yeah. that first big talus yeah. field. It was probably about a half a mile before then okay. on those switchbacks. Yeah, because we saw when he, when he crested over down into the talus field, he was ripping. Yeah. So I wasn't too f sure what the, his strength in terms of the technical terrain was, but him clearly his strength was was right there so uh yeah he was always consistently just a couple of minutes back from you and then scott who's back here now a couple of minutes back from him yeah. so that is your third time doing the 50k and your third time winning the 50k is that yeah. correct third my goal was to make this my third and last 50k here at the rut i so. wanted to top it off with a third victory and a course record i was lucky enough to get that today and i feel fulfilled here I'll be back to hang out because it's the most fun race. Do you feel fulfilled, Mikey? Because I know you were gunning for that sub five. I got sub five last year on a shorter course. <laughs> shorter course, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, you may have dodged that. Shorter course, but you that's You may fine, have dodged you know? that bullet. I'm sure the 28K would be something you'd be interested to go for. And uh, 
and uh, giving that a shot in the coming years as well. Maybe. Yeah. Or yeah. you could be sitting here doing the commentary. Um, Actually, that would be a lot of fun. Coming through here. No, that is not Ella. So we're waiting for uh, for Ella Ratliff, who will be our fifth lady. That is Mason okay. Copy, or Mike Copy from Salt Lake City. Um, oh, had a boy, Mike. Had a boy, Mike. Yeah, yeah, he was mixing it up with us last year at the race. Oh, yeah. How did you feel the course cha- differed between last year and this year? Do you think, because you ran a 4.59 last year, you're three minutes slower. However, in the women's race, they ran maybe th- 20 minutes faster, or maybe or 15 minutes slower. How much of a time gap do you think was reflective of the course differences? Uh, I mean, I'd have to dig into the data, but I mean, from the feeling of it all, it felt... It felt tougher. I mean, it's definitely a slower course. I think it's a slower course. Yeah. I mean, there was a you know a quarter mile difference, I think, but a couple hundred more feet of climbing, a yeah. few hundred more feet of climbing. But instead of going you know super smooth, runnable switchbacks down uh, headwaters, you know you take that right and you head yeah. up that fire road up yeah. into that you know talus field yeah. with those really short switchbacks yeah. and those short talusy stop, switchbacks, which go, are stop go yeah, which slows yeah. things down, you know yeah. so. Yeah, it it felt it felt harder this year. Yeah, yeah. I you, mean, but we had such fantastic weather. The weather was perfect. I think the weather being absolutely perfect was. So yeah, yesterday huge. when we raced across uh, a little bit on headwaters, but predominantly on top of Lone Peak, there was a lot of snow left. From yeah. what we saw there, was there any? Did you cross There's any no snow? snow? Okay. There's no snow. That's yeah. that sun roasted it last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you think the pace going down off of headwaters would? Or no, sorry, going down off of Lone Peak. Do you think it would have been faster with the snow or without? Faster with snow. Faster with snow. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, when the snow covers it all, you, I mean, you know, it's so tight, little rocks and all that. It, you you avoid getting things in your shoes and getting yeah. rocks in your shoes yeah. and kind of just slide down yeah. it. So if there was snow, that would be pretty yeah. fun. Um, What was your most memorable part? You can't say the finish because obviously that's your <laughs> most memorable part. <laughs> that's a cop other, out. other than that, <laughs> what's your most memorable part of the of the race course out there? Oh, man, I would say it was really nice. I mean... The two aid stations that I think were the most memorable memorable were the uh, Taylor Swift water aid station. I mean, going into there, and I mean, I, one of my favorite things about this uh, this race is the crowd, you know, Community. the crowds, the cheering, the support. Yep. Um, you know, seeing all my friends and seeing everybody out there, super stoked. Between that and Andesite, yeah. the aid stations are my favorite part. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Everything in between the aid station is kind of just like grind time. Yeah. But once you actually hit the, uh, yeah, you know, hit those aid stations, you see your friends, you get the high fives. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I love that. Um, one thing you need to give a shout out to your family because they were commenting on, they were been following your race all morning. Hell they yeah. were giving some great shout outs to you. Your brother was telling you you should be running a bit faster. Maybe if you had to listen to your brother, you could have went under five. Uh, I know, I know. Well, I mean. Yeah. Frank's always, yeah, he's, he's always going to uh, push my buttons and get the most out of me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my family's extremely supportive. Yeah. I don't yeah. think there's a, you know, yeah. love you guys. You guys are the best. Yeah. They were rooting uh, for you there today. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they watched start to finish, too. Yeah. Putting in five hours of time. I'm, they're going to have yeah. to bill me for that one. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring you guys out to dinner with the... Uh, with the prize money. <laughs> uh, so the Sinceri family and the North Face family and the Rudd family were so proud of you and your result today. Uh, three-time winner, now course record holder, well-deserved. Mike Sinceri, congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you.